All right, guys, MPW has dipped below $5 per share. A couple of weeks ago, the CEO uh, did a video addressing shareholders. It's on the MPW website. So I'm going to react to that. Also, we're going to uh, go over a couple of the things that uh, he, ta he talks about in that video. Um, and earnings is also coming up in 10 days. So I'm going to, you know, go over something that I'm kind of going to be watching out for on that earnings uh, to see if the company is actually hitting on some of the points that I think are important. So without much further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I'm on the MPW website, and here is the video message to shareholders from the CEO, Ed Aldag. Hello, I'm Ed Aldag, CEO of Medical Properties Trust. I'd like to express my deepest appreciation to all the shareholders who continue to place their trust in our company. We do not take it for granted. All right, uh, you're welcome, I guess. We pride ourselves on maintaining the high road, even as our share price has come under pressure from others who stand to benefit financially from such a decline. However. All right, so on that, he's talking about the short interest, obviously. Just one second, we'll pop into that. So Medical Properties Trust has about 125 million shares sold short. This figure represents over 21% of the entire company. That is a very substantial amount of short interest and definitely will have a cooling effect on the share price of the company. And now back to the video. Comment below whether you think the short interest is overblown or justified on this stock. I would be remiss not to acknowledge the real toll this has taken on people who have invested their hard-earned savings with us. As a large shareholder myself, with significant interest tied to the success of this company. So, yeah. One, yes, definitely taking at least an emotional toll on people having to, you know, look at the unrealized loss in their account on a daily basis. But, um... Second thing, it's true, he has about $18 million worth of MPW stock. Don't know what percentage of his net worth is tied up in that, but, you know, $18 million worth of stock in the company is certainly nothing to sneeze at and certainly means that his interests are probably pretty well aligned with the interests of shareholders. Please know that I hear and feel every one of you. So with that in mind, it's time you heard directly from me all the reasons I remain confident in NPT's proven business model and ability to create long-term value for our shareholders. Let's begin with the facts. For 20 years, our strategy has been focused on making profitable investments in hospital real estate. Through this time-tested and transparent strategy, MPT has grown into the second largest owner of hospital real estate in the world. Our business model has contributed to the clinical excellence in hundreds of hospitals globally. Okay, so yeah, they own a lot of hospitals. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that's good or bad on its own, but, you know, it is, it is a true statement. To put some numbers around that, our portfolio currently includes approximately 44,000 hospital beds and over 400 properties across 10 countries. Today, our total asset value stands at $19.2 billion. Okay, speaks to, um, you know, geographical diversification, diversification of properties, size of their portfolio. Um, the 19.2 billion uh, worth of assets that that will be important when uh, the topic of debt comes up later. Having grown 118% since the end of 2018, 
we are incredibly proud of the how now the growth if uh if it required a lot of you know dilution or debt to you know achieve that growth in assets you know was it done at um you know in a way that is uh, you know value add for shareholders well maybe maybe not diverse set of hospital properties in our portfolio, which includes not-for-profit, public, and private hospital operators, as well as a strong mix of asset types, from general acute care hospitals to behavioral health facilities and inpatient rehabilitation facilities. This portfolio includes relationships with world-class hospital operators around the world. As we approach 2020, the, the quality of the operators is one of the things people kind of try to, um, you know, use as a mark against them. Now, prior to the pandemic, I don't know that that was even something that, uh, you know, people had on their radar as a, an issue needing addressing with this company. So is it that the operators are suddenly bad or is it that they were, you know, ill-equipped as were many other you know, businesses to handle the impacts of a pandemic. 24. We remain confident in the value and strength of this portfolio. Next, I'd like to explain our levers for shareholder value creation. MPT owns real estate, and our cash flows predominantly come from long term lease agreements with our tenants. There are a few important things you should be aware of about these leases. First, they are inflation protected. So in 2024, for instance, we expect $50 million in incremental cash rent and interest from our current portfolio based on prevailing rates of inflation. Yeah, so um, I've mentioned it in previous videos that they have uh, CPI based rent escalators. So they, they collect more rent when inflation, uh, you know, goes up, basically, there's there may be a cap on it. I'm not sure, but basically, if the CPI says inflation is four percent, then they get to raise the rent more than if the CPI says inflation is two percent. So even if interest rates are raised to combat inflation, it should not be quite as bad if they have um, an inflation-based rent escalator compared to um, maybe a company like uh, Realty Income that just basically has baked in like 1% rent escalators. That's not doing much for you either from an interest rate increase perspective or an inflation perspective. Another key point to keep in mind is that leasing offers a number of benefits to the operators themselves. By leasing, rather than owning real estate, Hospitals create the capital flexibility to invest where it matters most, taking care of patients. Operators also benefit from a small and predictable rental expense, which typically amounts to a fraction of their average labor costs versus the often unpredictable interest and principal payments associated with secured debt when choosing to own their own real estate. Our strategic investments in operators have been another key lever of shareholder value creation over the years. These investments not only facilitate better alignment of interest with our tenants, they have also been an excellent source of opportunities to grow and expand our portfolio. And when we have exited these investments, they have generated profitable returns as evidenced most recently by our investments in Median, Autos, and Springstone. Because MPT invests in hospital real estate for the long term, 15, 30 plus years, we are also committed to ensuring the long-term viability of our hospitals for the communities they serve. Yeah, so um, one thing they've been, you know, criticized for is, you know, putting money into, for example, uh, Prospect and Steward. Um, in the case of Prospect, expect uh, accepting equity in lieu of cash for back rent that was owed. And they're pointing to some counterexamples of why supporting and investing in different hospital operators that also lease hospitals from them can actually work to their advantage. So let's continue. There are times when high quality hospital operators experience short-term financial challenges, 
caused by unexpected events. The COVID-19 pandemic, the recent nursing shortages which exasperated labor costs are excellent examples. In these rare situations, MPT will sometimes step in to provide temporary limited support through working capital loans. These loans... Yeah, and so they say temporary and limited, but, you know, some people say, you know, it's it's too much in this instance. Which comprise only a very small percentage of our assets, carry market cash interest rates, are backed by strong collateral, include significant protections, and are certainly preferable to permanently cutting rent. We believe this is the right thing to do for the long-term value of our hospitals. Doesn't do our investors or the communities we serve any good to watch the right long-term operator for a facility become distracted by temporary and preventable financial challenges. So this is where we are today. Two decades of successfully demonstrating our business model and safeguarding America's access to quality. So I guess like the, the counterpoint people would make to that is that um, MPW has potentially been in some instances subsidizing some of these operators at the expense of the shareholders. But um, I suppose they're contending that, you know, having that operator, you know, forced out because MPW didn't, you know, find some kind of a solution would actually be worse for the value um, of the property in the long run. So I can see it from that perspective. But right now, of course, with the share price taking a beating and all the negative articles, it's hard to, you know, see the, uh, the, the light at the end of the tunnel and, um, you know, see the bright side of things. Hard to see the glass half full, so to speak. The hospitals. And like any successful business, we've not gotten where we are by shying away from challenges. We tackle them head on so we can continue providing value. Let's face it, we're in a tough economy and there's a great deal of focus on inflation and higher interest rates. At the same time, our business cash flow profile, while still robust, has meaningfully changed over the past 18 months as a result of certain strategic asset sales and the extended timeline by which the full prospect restructuring is expected to take shape. Against this backdrop, much of the investment community has questioned our ability to refinance debt maturities, even ones that are several years out in time. The short answer is this. We have a number of attractive options for addressing scheduled debt maturities as a result of our recently announced capital allocation strategy. We are already taking action under this plan. For instance, hundreds of millions in cash proceeds from the sale of our Australia and Prime portfolios have already been deployed towards near-term debt paydown. We have also made the decision to adjust the size of our dividend to better align with our cash flow profile following the recent and pending asset divestiture. All right, so debt maturities, I'm going to pull that up in just a second, and then we'll get back. When it comes to the debt maturity schedules, you can see the years on the left and the total debt second to right. So 23 and 24 have been taken care of already. However, there is a substantial increase in what comes due in 2025, 26, and 27. That sort of represents a bit of a debt cliff, and that's what investors right now are speculating if MPW can handle. They sold off the Australian properties, which took care of what's due for the rest of this year and next year. Do me a huge favor if you're finding this video helpful and like and subscribe to help support my channel and its growth. Now back to finish the video. In total, relative to our previous dividend level, this is projected to save approximately two and a half billion dollars over the span of our debt maturities, while continuing to return substantial cash to our shareholders. We are actively working on other transactions that would decrease leverage even more quickly. We believe that the- So yeah, the dividend cut is going to preserve a lot of cash, but the, the debt maturities go pretty well past, uh, you know, 2027 and 2025 through 2027 is when like more than half of the debt matures in a pretty short period. And so, you know, the 2.5 billion out into like the 2030s doesn't do as much for the debt that's coming due in the next like three, four years. That's kind of 
where the issue is, I think. The value of our underlying assets remains strong as evidenced by the recent cash prices we've achieved on sales and the continued level of interest we see from sophisticated private investors. Okay, so yeah, that's true. So remember I said the 19 billion in assets would be important later. So the 19 billion that they have in assets is compared with the 10 billion that they have in debt. Now, the uh, Australian properties that they just sold, they got pretty close to the level of what uh, the value was on the balance sheet, okay? Um, it wasn't like it wasn't exact, but they got a pretty attractive valuation on it, which, you know, to me would suggest that, you know, the when they say 19 billion in assets, that's probably a pretty close approximation of what the assets are actually worth if we take the sale of the Australian properties as valid evidence. In closing, we strongly believe that MPT represents an attractive investment opportunity based on the unique nature of our hospital real estate, the careful structuring of our inflation protected leases, the strength of our cash flows, and our current valuation discount relative to peers and of our own historical multiples. So, to you. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, Fast Graphs actually, you know, pointed out that, you know, based on historical multiples, um, right now, MPW is pro like the, the appropriate valuation would probably be something more like $18 a share based on multiples of FFO. Um, and when it comes to the assets, well, it's about $14 per share that they're worth uh, based on the difference between the balance sheet and the current share price. So either way you slice it, it would seem like it's still an attractive, it's even more of an attractive uh, price today. But of course, you know, there's, there's things in here that, you know, have generated a lot of fear and that's going to, you know, drive short interest and it's going to make people capitulate and sell out of the stock. Our shareholders, again, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for putting your trust in our proven business model over the past 20 years. As we continue to execute our value creation plan, we will be sharing more video updates directly with you. We appreciate your continued support. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, all in all, like, I don't know. It, it comes off a little sales pitchy, but I get why they did it. Um, you know, they feel a need to respond to, you know, some of the negative sentiments out there. And of course, if they've got, you know, if, if this guy has $18 million worth of the stock, well, every time the share price uh, takes a, a big hit, that's probably a pretty big hit to his net worth. So yeah, of course, they're going to do what they can to try to, you know, prevent the share price from sliding more. Um, anyway, that's all for that video. And if they, if they do another, um, you know, video update, I'll definitely react to that if you guys want. I'll also be watching out on earnings and I'll probably do a video after that comes out just to update you all. Be sure to join the conversation. Let me know what you think of Medical Properties Trust. Join our Discord, link is in the description, and catch me live Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Cashflow Kings Live, link in the description. Have a great day, everyone.